three important things we're trying to do uh, through this event. Uh, one is celebrate, uh, another is reflect, and another is looking forward, right? Those three elements are there. Um, celebrating, I mean, the three colleagues, the outstanding colleagues we're recognizing today, uh, Brandon Bohr, uh, Shweta Singh, and Joaquin Goni, are outstanding colleagues, of course, but the first and foremost, we're here to celebrate their success in uh, becoming tenured associate professors. Uh, as they know, and many of us in the room, it's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's a really, really uh, tough slog, and we're here to celebrate that, first and foremost. The second is really, it's an opportunity for these outstanding colleagues to reflect upon uh, what they did, what decisions they took that led to success. And this is not necessarily about the technical details of which paper they wrote or not, but key decisions uh, that they made and key pathways, what they tried that worked, what are the untrodden paths that they took that helped them get to where they are. Um, and that's why we have a lot of uh, students and postdocs uh, here, as well, as well as other assistant professors who can look uh, to you all as role models uh, for following that path uh, forward as well. The third element is looking ahead, looking to the future. Uh, it's an opportunity for these colleagues to kind of present, now that they've got, you know, passed this hurdle, what's this next phase of their career going to look like? And it's a great opportunity, by the way, uh, for those who are doing this, to build new relationships and new collaborations. We've had many faculty who've done this, who've gotten to know other colleagues and started collaborations with them that they didn't used to do in the past, right? So it's an opportunity to look forward into collaborating more. Uh, one of the things I tell all new faculty in engineering is if within the first five years you're not extensively collaborating across the disciplines, it's a missed opportunity. If in the first 10 years you're not extensively collaborating around the university, it's a missed opportunity. So uh, that third part of their talks is going to reflect on what they're looking forward to doing in the next few years. Uh, so without further ado, uh, let's begin. Um, who uh, is it? <laughs> Luna Lu, the uh, interim head of civil engineering. Over to you, Luna. Thank you. This is yeah. great. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, everyone, to join us today to celebrate one of our rising star at a civil engineering, also at Purdue, and Professor Brandon Bohr. And Brandon has joined Purdue Civil Engineering in 2015 from UT Austin, right, where he got his PhD. And during that time, he already received many prestigious awards, including NSF uh, Graduate Fellowship, and also have uh, um, I'm sorry, you have another award. Please remind me. Yeah, Fulbright Scholarship and studied in Haneski, right, University in Finland. All right, so we are very excited to have the Brandon come here. Of course, uh, he was, you know, it's not a surprise to us that he has been really successful in the last uh, six years. And Brandon has published uh, 46 papers, and uh, many of them in very prestigious journals, such as Science Advance, Nature Nanotechnology, and you may know Brandon for his work, what we call dirty baby robots. But, <laughs> but actually, he's really, his work is at the intersect of the building science and the microbiology and some of the physics and the study of, on the human behavior, right? So, and Brandon's work has been highlighted by so many national mediums, such as the CNN, right? And uh, I remember that. And, and then, um, so, and also, Brandon has has been received many high prestigious awards, such as NSF Career Award, and also Wenski Leadership Research Leadership Award at uh, Purdue Civil Engineering, and uh, you also received outstanding graduate uh, advisor award, right? And Brandon is also very actively engaged graduate, undergraduate students in the classroom and in the research. I think over the past uh, six years, you have involved over 200 undergrad students and students in his research. Not only he has received many recognitions, but many of his students has received recognitions from ASHRAE and all the other associations. So with further ado, and I would like to invite the Brandon Professor Bohr come to the stage and to reflect and share with us of your success. Hey, thank you, Professor uh, Liu, for that very nice introduction, and Professor Raman for organizing this event. So good morning, 
Uh, my name is Brandon Bohr, and I am now an associate professor in the Lyle School of Civil Engineering. I'm part of the Architectural Engineering Group, and some of my colleagues are here today. Uh, and our group focuses on buildings, and my research is focused on air quality inside buildings. So I'd like to kind of give a background on my personal history, academic journey to Purdue, and some of my accomplishments at Purdue. Uh, so I'd like to start with my family. So I would not be here today if it was not for uh, my family and their love and support uh, throughout my life. Uh, so here are some photos of my family. Uh, my parents, you can see here, my father, Brian Bohr, and my mother, Lila Bohr, uh, my sister, Lauren Bohr, uh, and my better half, who's in the room today. Uh, so my parents have always encouraged me to pursue my education. Uh, I remember when I was a kid, I, of course, would play with things like Legos, and uh, they suggested that I should become an architect or an engineer. I remember in sixth grade uh, presenting that to people uh, in the classroom, and now I'm an architectural engineer, uh, which I think is interesting. Um, my sister is shown there on the right, and my uh, brother-in-law, brother-in-law Danny. Uh, my sister is a firefighter and a paramedic in Howard County, Maryland, and my brother-in-law is a nurse. Uh, so they have very tough jobs, and they've recently welcomed two children. I have a niece and a nephew now. Uh, also, my wife's family shown there at the bottom, and my cat. So I don't have any human children yet, but I do have some cat children, uh, which are an important part of my life and provide a lot of comfort in the home, uh, and they've been with us for some time. Uh, so my academic journey started in high school. Uh, I grew up in Columbia, Maryland, which is in Howard County, which is between Baltimore, Maryland, and Washington, D.C. I went to Longreach High School, which is a public high school in the county. And one thing that was unique about Longreach is that they had a technology magnet program. Uh, and that allowed me to get exposure to engineering uh, at a young age. And we had the opportunity to participate in a variety of engineering projects. Uh, some are shown here. And these were team-based projects and I think really helped get me on track in engineering. So we had the Team America Rocketry Challenge. Uh, Botball, which some of you may know, uh, also an IEEE robotics competition. And then I had the opportunity to work at the Johns Hopkins University Applied Physics Lab for one year uh, doing research on uh, evaluating the thrust produced by model rocket motors. Uh, one thing that was nice is that our rocketry team, uh, we made the national finals in 2004, uh, and the Baltimore Sun had a feature on our team. Uh, and here I am in the photograph, uh, preparing a model rocket uh, with a few of my peers. Uh, and what's nice is that we're quoted here, and uh, we had a successful rocket launch, and our goal was to launch these rockets to about 1,200 feet and carry two eggs back to the ground safely. Uh, and our launch was successful, and I have a quote here, saying, it was great, added Brandon Bohr, 16, <laughs> who was in the 11th grade. Uh, my father is also quoted in the article uh, in the bottom right-hand corner. So this rocketry experience was great for me, uh, really opened my eyes to engineering and, and working as part of a team uh, to design something, to build something. Uh, really a uh, very good experience. Uh, after high school, I went to uh, a small college in Pennsylvania, in New York, Pennsylvania. Uh, which at one point was the capital of the United States. Um, I pursued a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. Uh, York is a small school, but does have an ABET accredited mechanical engineering program. And the one thing that my parents and I liked about York College was that it had a co-op program, uh, like we have here at Purdue. And through my co-op experience, I was able to work for eight months full-time at NIST, which is a National Institute of Standards and Technology, uh, which was about an hour and a half from my parents' home in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Uh, and at NIST, I worked with the Building and Fire Research Lab in the Indoor Air Quality and Ventilation Group. Uh, the name has since changed, uh, but it was called BFRL at the time. And that really opened my eyes to doing research. Uh, you know, I went to a small school. We didn't have undergraduate research opportunities. But at NIST, I was able to work with uh, a bunch of researchers on different indoor air quality projects really enjoy that experience. 
Uh, and that's what you know, piqued my interest in pursuing research on indoor air quality as a graduate student. Uh, one thing that was nice was that when I was there, there was a, uh, like a baking competition, uh, which I won with this design of the BFRL logo, uh, with the fire and the building there. Um, but a very nice experience, and these co-op experience, experiences, which are important for our students here, uh, very valuable for me as well. And I also worked on a design project my senior year through the Formula SAE competition. Uh, I helped design and build the suspension system, uh, specifically the roll bar. Um, we were called YC Racing for your college racing. We competed at the uh, national event in 24 or 2004, and you can see me up there as doing some TIG welding of the frame of the uh, car. And then on the right there was our successful tilt test to make sure that the car did not roll over. After York College, I went to the University of Texas at Austin, in Austin, Texas, uh, where I received my master's and PhD. Uh, I received my PhD in 2015. And there I was part of the architectural engineering group, uh, you know, similar in many ways to our group here. Uh, it was a very good experience working with, you know, top-notch students from around the world, great faculty, very supportive faculty. Uh, my advisors have shown up here in this photo. We're doing the hook'em horns at my dissertation defense. Uh, my advisors were Professor Atola Novoselic and Professor Ying Zhu. Uh, and the focus of my research as a graduate student was looking at indoor air quality, specifically uh, what pollutants were exposed to in the bedroom and the sleep microenvironment, as well as looking at dust resuspension. Uh, as a PhD student, I had the opportunity to spend about two and, a half, two and a half years in Finland, living in Espoo, Finland, and Helsinki, Finland. Uh, thanks to support from a Fulbright grant and uh, NSF Nordic Research Opportunity Grant. Uh, and there I worked at the VTT Technical Research Center of Finland uh, and the University of Helsinki and Toy Tervis Leitos, which is the Finnish Institute of Occupational Health. Uh, so that opened my eyes to a bunch of different research, specifically on aerosol science. Uh, Finland has very good research on aerosols, atmospheric aerosols, indoor aerosols. I uh, really enjoyed working there, had the opportunity uh, to explore much of the country, including uh, going in the sauna and then jumping into uh, freezing water in a hole in the ice, as well as going up near the Arctic Circle in Rovaniemi. Uh, and this is also a photo of me in Austin, Texas, where I went to the first uh, Formula One race that was held there at the Circuit of Americas uh, back in 2012, I believe it was. Uh, so my experience as a graduate student prepared me well to become a professor here at Purdue, uh, here in Indiana. Uh, and I joined Purdue right after I graduated from UT Austin. And my research here is focused on indoor air quality, uh, specifically looking at pollutants in the air and the factors that affect them. I uh, have worked with many great undergraduate and graduate students, uh, helped create two courses, one on thermodynamics for civil engineering students and one on indoor air quality and then participated in a variety of service activities. Uh, so I'd like to acknowledge the great PhD students I've worked with, many of which are in the room today. Uh, a number of them have received very prestigious awards, and I'm sure uh, they'll all receive awards in the future. Uh, Tian Ren was my first PhD student, and he'll be joining the University of Cincinnati in the fall as an assistant professor of architectural engineering. Uh, Danielle has been with me for a long time, Jingling as well. Satya, Chengju, Jordan, and Brian will be starting in the fall as PhD students. I've also the opportunity to collaborate with a bunch of faculty around campus in civil engineering, environmental and architectural engineering, uh, in chemistry and psychology. Uh, and this has allowed us to uh, look at indoor air from different perspectives, which has been very helpful for my research. I've uh, mm -hmm. been fortunate to receive some funding from NSF, EPA, uh, and some other agencies over the years and then use that funding to produce some hopefully impactful papers on indoor air quality, on human exposure to pollutants, uh, and so forth. I made a few, I think, somewhat meaningful research discoveries over the years, one looking at how babies resuspend dust, another looking at how nanoparticles are formed in the air, uh, some other projects looking at volatile chemicals and their emissions and transformations in the air, uh, and as well as developing uh, new industry test methodologies for evaluating HVAC filters. 
A uh, big part of what I've done at Purdue in terms of service has been uh, my EPICS team. So EPICS is Engineering Projects and Community Service. And I created the Global Air Quality Trekkers team uh, back in 2016. And we have worked on a project in Kenya for many years. Uh, we had two study abroad trips to Nandi, Kenya, and Western Kenya. Uh, we built a test kitchen at Purdue. And our goal there was to try to reduce exposure to uh, particulate matter and biomass burning kitchens. Uh, we now have a local project here in Lafayette. I'm also engaged in my uh, professional organizations uh, through various voting member uh, positions and leadership positions, and then also hold a few editorial board positions uh, in some top journals in my field. And my research has been featured in our CE Impact magazine. We've had a number of articles about myself and my students over the years, uh, which has been very nice to kind of highlight our accomplishments. Also in the national, international news, uh, NPR, CNN, and, and so forth. And lastly, you know, outside of research, uh, I do try to maintain somewhat of a balanced life. I uh, enjoy cooking, thanks a lot to my uh, mother. Uh, make pizza, I enjoy doing that. Uh, Enjoy taking walks through Happy Hollow Park uh, and being around nature, uh, watching movies, and also following Purdue uh, basketball and football. So thank you. That's a little bit about my background. And please let me know if you have any questions. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. So, Brendan, you clearly is uh, truly reflect a Purdue civil engineering spirit, as we always say, pursue excellence and uh, amplify the impact. I think you have done very well in every aspect of teaching, research, learning, and the impacts. There are so many evidence. So, now we're going to open the floor for questions. For yes. Straightforward, general knowledge based. Uh, your research is on air quality, typically indoor. How bad is the inside air compared to outside? Uh, that's a good question. So, in general, at least here in the United States, I would say it's often much worse indoors than outdoors. Uh, in other parts of the world, the opposite may be true. Uh, but what we know is that there's just many sources of indoor air pollution. Um, and we often don't ventilate buildings so well, so that can trap some of that pollution and extend our exposures. Uh, so concentrations of many different pollutants, whether they're in the gas phase or the particle phase, can be you know, a factor of 10 or, or more higher than uh, the surrounding outdoor environment. And that's because of things like cooking, combustion, cleaning, uh, off-gassing from building materials, uh, people, all of us. Uh, and other things, personal care products, and so forth. Hi. Uh, I'm Jess Mayer. I handle communications for environmental and ecological engineering, and you're a courtesy faculty member. Uh, we were just talking about air quality. I was just wondering, uh, in general, if you could talk about how your work kind of overlaps with environmental challenges and issues and why you pursue that? Yeah, uh, so I, I, I think that uh, early on I think I realized air pollution was an important environmental health issue and indoor air specifically because we spend much of our time indoors and I thought it was very interesting, you know, the fundamental science of, of air quality engineering. Um, in terms of environmental engineering, you know, I'm in architectural engineering group. Uh, so we study buildings, and I think there's obviously a lot of overlap between what I do in you know, architectural and environmental engineering. Uh, maybe you can look at architectural engineering as environmental engineering of, of buildings in a way. Um, so I think certainly air quality has been maybe not given as much attention as other fields in environmental engineering like water quality uh, and so forth, uh, and certainly needs to be given more attention. I think the COVID-19 pandemic uh, kind of highlighted that, that, you know, buildings and their ventilation systems were not really uh, well set up to deal with the transmission of uh, airborne viruses. 
Uh, Greg Shaver, uh, Herrick Labs Director. Brandon, wonderful job. I mean, incredible journey you're on. Your trajectory is very bright. Um, what can we do to help you? <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, I mean, my work is mostly experimental, so uh, I think as all experimentalists, you know, having great facilities is, is an important part of what we do. And we do have great facilities here, which have allowed us to make, make the discoveries that we have made. Uh, and I think continued investment in that, especially at Herrick Labs, with all the different facilities we have there is, is very important. Uh, you know, I do think in terms of building science and so forth, we do have some of the best facilities in, in the world here at Purdue, uh, which allows us to do some really interesting uh, research. Brandon, I, I had a <coughs> quick question. By the, by the way, I, are you sure there was not a setup question no. before? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, I, I guess looking ahead, uh, you know, five years, fast forwarding, um, you know, w what are some of the big challenges now the, the weight of tenure is off your back? You know, wh what is that, what's the passion project for you now up ahead? What, what are you going to do to change the world and uh, air quality and so on? Uh, I, I think one thing that is very interesting uh, today is, you know, sensors and sensing, uh, sensing of the built environment. And we have made a lot of progress in making better sensors to measure different types of air pollutants. Uh, but there's a lot more that we can do. And you know, certainly I can envision that there's a lot of work to you know, set up these massive air pollution sensor networks outside and inside uh, in HVAC systems to track you know, our exposures to air pollutants, uh, to measure things that we don't conventionally measure. Uh, for example, like government air quality monitoring stations. Uh, certainly this is important not only in this country, but globally where there's really a sparsity of air quality data being collected, for example, in parts of Africa, uh, Middle East, uh, South America. So there's a lot of opportunity there for kind of massive air quality monitoring. And then using that data to uh, control buildings and their HVAC systems uh, to link exposures to health outcomes, things like that. So I think that's certainly something I'd like to be a part of. So Brandon, maybe I can ask you a question. Um, since we have many um, junior faculty and some of grad students here, so it will be great if you can share some of you know, your strategy, how that make you being so successful in a shorter period of time and establish a very interdisciplinary research and collaboration work within Purdue and also outside of the Purdue. So what advice you can give it to the students and some junior faculty here? I think for me, you know, a lot of my uh, success is, is related to my intellectual curiosity and I think that's what will drive me moving forward. And I think for, you know, graduate students that they're curious and passionate about, you know, their research, I think that's a good driving force for them, for their careers. Uh, you know, there's a lot of exciting things to investigate, certainly in, in the research that we do, uh, and obviously many engineering fields. So I think that kind of curiosity to kind of discover things that people have not looked at before uh, can really help you know, motivate you uh, through the ups and downs of, of tenure. Um, and then I think having supportive family environment is very important, uh, supportive faculty, supportive university. Uh, and you know we're all going to have setbacks in our careers, especially on tenure track. And you know just trying to keep pushing forward uh, is very important. So not giving up and uh, you know learn from mistakes that you make. We're all going to make mistakes and and try to do better. And uh, yeah. Any other questions for Brendan? All right. Thank you, Brendan, for a wonderful. Thank you. Presentation.